Thank you, Grace. And before we get started, I just put a link to the portal inside the chat. I just ask that if there's anyone on the call that has never logged into the portal or someone has logged into the portal a long time ago, uh, please attempt to log into the portal now while we're on the line, uh, just in case you have any issues. Uh, if it goes past this meeting, you're still having issues, please reach out to us at the SSBCI underscore information at treasury.gov and uh, include your outreach manager. So I'll give a minute or two uh, for that while I set up my test environment. Uh, in the meantime, if we have any questions so far with what Grace or Sue has presented thus far, uh, you have a minute or two to, uh, to ask those questions. And you may be double muted, so um, just make sure you're all mute on your computer as well. Thank you, Jay. I'm almost set up, so maybe another 30 seconds. Why, Jay, is pulling a bit the environment. Just as a reminder, we will share the slides and presentation um, after this training. Hopefully, we can get that out this week, and we will also make it available in the resource page in the uh, reporting portal that the, that was linked by Jay in the chat. Thank you. Okay, looks like there aren't any questions so far. So I have the environment loaded up. So I'm going to share screen and we're going to get started with the demo. Uh, we're going to do two different demos today. One of them is going to be for the, uh, the standard uh, compliant transaction uh, submission. Then we're also going to show you very quickly uh, what the modified or potentially non-compliant issues a submission would look like. So the link that I put into the chat, uh, it has a suffix of SSBCI-home-page. Uh, this is the page that that link is going to take you to. If you have a link that does not have the SSBCI home uh, page um, as a suffix, then you will be sent to this page right here. And you would just simply click dismiss and then scroll down to the green SSBCI program tile. And you click that and it takes you right back to the page uh, and it will have the SSBCI home uh, page as the suffix. On the left-hand side, you will find capital program reports. So you're gonna click on that and that's gonna take you to a splash or blue table that has your quarter reports and annual reports. It's going to default to quarterly reports and uh, each jurisdiction is going to have a list of either previous uh, quarterly reports that were submitted in addition to what the current uh, quarterly report um, is going to look like. This is my testing environment. So there's a bunch of uh, different files here you're not going to have right now as many as I do, uh, but you may have one, two, uh, et cetera, depending on how long uh, you've uh, been uh, in the program. So first thing, just look at as we have a legend on the left-hand side, the light blue icon is gonna be the blue pencil that you're able to click in in order to edit and submit your quarterly report. And you're gonna have a dark blue icon if you're uh, not ready to submit, uh, meaning that the portal is not open and it is either prior to the submission deadline or it's after the submission deadline. So we're gonna choose one of these records and we're gonna go through submitting uh, your standard compliant uh, transactions quality report. So in clicking that blue uh, icon, uh, I see a lot of familiar faces. So most people are familiar with the portal, but I'll briefly go over the navigation in the portal. We have the left-hand navigation bar where you can click through each one of the sections. Towards the bottom of each page, you're also gonna have a back button if you're on section four. And then you have a back button and a next button if you're on section two and section three. On the right hand side, we have a widget which is sticky. It will stay this regardless of what section that you're clicking into. And it's going to have your jurisdiction name in here. It's going to have your reporting period and it's going to have a deadline. Again, we're in my testing environment. So these reporting period numbers and this March deadline is going to be inaccurate. 
what you're going to see for this current quarter is you're going to see January 1 through uh, March 31st. And then your submission window is going to be April 1 through April 30th, uh, both of 2024. In the first section, this is basically just a user instruction. So we ask you just to uh, to read over this. We have a few links uh, within this user instruction area where we have the capital program reporting guidance link here. And we also have the program policy guidelines link here. And then we have the quarterly report user guide link here. Once you've read through that and you're familiar with everything, you move on to section two, which is the participating jurisdiction information. And this is going to be the uh, implementing entities information that is being pulled from your capital program application. Again, this is my testing environment, so this is going to be empty, but it will be populated with your implementing entity information. If you see any errors in here and uh, we need to get that fixed before you submit your report, you can simply let us know. Uh, and Mayma has put that email address inside of the chat. Uh, but you can let us know uh, at SSBCI underscore information at treasury.gov. But we ask that you uh, carbon copy your outreach manager in that communication. In this page, we also have a contacts page. And this will show all of your users that are currently in your account. Uh, we realize there may be some people that are reporting that are different from the actual application and submission and, and managing of the application. So we wanted to give you a way of adding new contacts to your account, uh, just in case they are the person that will be taking care of submitting your quarterly report. If you do need to add that person, we have a page which is outlined and highlighted blue. And this highlight uh, link takes us over to the Treasury COVID Relief Hub. And this will allow you to add those new users. So in clicking that, you'll see another window pop open and you will see the COVID relief, uh, relief hub, COVID-19 relief hub. You would simply come over to certification and you would click submit. And this is just certifying that you're authorized by the recipient grantee uh, to submit the above names, basically to add someone to the account for access to the portal. Once you have submitted, you'll come over to the designation form. The designation form allows you to add those uh, individuals uh, by clicking on add a new contact. Once you clicked on add a new contact, we would need you to fill in all of the required fields, which is going to be your first name or the new contact's first name, the last name, the title, name of organization, email address, and then you're going to be able to select a role. Now, as Sue mentioned earlier in her presentation, we have three levels of, of access. The first one, which is going to be the most restrictive, is going to be the account administrator. And the account administrator can only view and download uh, your quarterly report template. The second one is going to be uh, the account POC. They can view, download, and upload the completed report. And then you scroll up a little bit further, and you're going to see the uh, authorized representative. So we are dealing with the capital program. So we ask you just select the ones that has the prefix of SSBCI capital. If you see me scroll down, you'll see some other ones that may have TA. Uh, so make sure you're picking your capital roles. Once you select your role, you can add that new contact. Once you click the blue add new contact button, then that contact will be added to this table below. There's no limit in terms of how many people you can add in as a contact. And there are no limit in terms of how many people can be uh, having the uh, authorized representative role, for example. So if you add five people, all five people can potentially have that same role. Additionally, if you have someone that is already a contact, you can also edit their rights or their roles by clicking on a blue pencil and the same uh, page kind of pops up and then you would just select the role that you wanna add. If it's a new role, uh, if you wanna add an additional role, you just click this drop down and you're able to add that role in here. It didn't work for me because I selected my name. I have all of my roles that we see behind the window here, but you can simply add those roles here. The one thing that we do advise is if this person, this new contact is first time logging into the system um, and has not completed ID.me, we need them to be added to your jurisdiction account first prior to clicking the link that I put into the chat, which will initiate the ID.me process. 
Once they're completed with the ID.me process, then they would have the ability to log into the portal. So once you've either added a new contact or you have uh, edited the contract uh, contact the way that you want, you can close out this window and it will drop back to the quarterly report. That finishes up section two, and we're going to go over to section three. And in section three, uh, we have a little bit of information in here. Um, some of the things that Sue and and uh, that we've already uh, talked about already. Um, and then you can scroll down just a little bit, and you see that we have the word here, where it's please download your designated template. So clicking the word here would start that download. And once you have that download saved, then you can work offline. And once you have that document uh, updated and it looks the way that you want it to look, you come back to here, come back to section three, and you're able to upload that file here. So clicking upload files will open up an Explorer dialog window and you click the file that you want to upload, click OK. There's going to be a dialog window that pops open and the word done will turn blue. Click that and then the table down below will populate with the quality report. One thing to bring to note is the name uh, convention was changed a little bit. We add the word final and underscore to anything that you've uploaded. So don't be alarmed if it doesn't look exactly like the name uh, that you um, uh, uploaded. Once you have your quality report uploaded, you hit next or you can click section four on the left-hand navigation side. And this is the window where you're gonna be submitting um, and certifying your quarter report. What I advise everyone to do is to copy your name here and then paste it into the window over here. I say that because this space is space and case sensitive. Uh, so if I change my last uh, letter of my last name to a lowercase s and click certify and submit, I'm going to get an error. So again, come back, change that back to capital. And again, I just advise copying it from here and then pasting it into here. Once you have that there, you'll click certify and submit and you'll get a green success. And then you'll see a change of the status to submit it in the widget uh, to a green submitted. At this point, you have your quarterly report submitted. If you realize uh, maybe a day later or a couple hours later that the report that you uploaded was incorrect, you do have the ability to unsubmit your report. This unsubmit report function is only available while you're within the submission window, uh, i.e. before the deadline has reached. So our deadline for this quarterly report is gonna be April 1. The deadline is gonna be April 30th. If it's May 1 um, and you've submitted on April 30th, if you come back in May 1 and try to unsubmit, it's not gonna allow you to do so. So since we're still in here in my demo area and the window or the deadline is still open, you would simply click unsubmit, confirm your unsubmit. It's gonna give you a green success over here. I like to always refresh my window. And then in section three, you will notice that that file has been deleted here. What you would simply do is redo uh, your upload. So now you have your corrected uh, template and you go back and click open again. You'll get the dialog, a blue done, click done, and the table is going to populate. We're going to come back to section four and we're going to copy and paste again. And once you hit uh, submit, you'll get a green success and then the status will go back to submit it. So at this point, you're done. So this was a demo of the uh, the compliant transaction. We're going to jump real quick and we're going to do the modified uh, transactions uh, report. So again, we hit dismiss, come back to SSBCI program, click on capital program reports. And we're going to find the one that is a modified. Um, so I know that in my back end that this is the modified page. One thing that you will notice is section four has been changed to modified certification and submission page. Uh, otherwise, everything else is the same. You have your user instructions. You have your participating jurisdiction information. You have your contacts page or area that you can add or update. You have your upload page. 
So you still are required to upload your template. So click the upload files. And we're going to upload that template here. Click done. And we're going to move to section four. One thing to bring to note is once we did update that and uploaded that file, this upload dialog box is no longer available. It's grayed out. Again, if you figure that you've uploaded something incorrect, you do have the ability to click here and you can delete and then re-upload the correct file. For the purpose of the demo, I'm not going to do that. And we're going to move over to the modified certification and submission page. And once we're here, this is going to be a whole bunch of new information, uh, which was not on the previous section four. So we ask you to read over this carefully, read over sections one through three, four. And then you have um, the uh, the documentation of form of an attachment A. So you can download that here once you have all of that information uploaded. And again, this is one for the modified or potentially non-compliant issues. Um, then you would have that form filled out. And you come down to upload files, just like we did with the compliant transactions. And we're going to upload your attachment A. We'll click the blue done. It's going to drop down into the table. And again, we're going to copy and we're going to paste. Once we have that copied and paste, we're going to hit certify and submit. You get a green success up top and you'll see submitted uh, successfully with the subject or the, the status has changed to submit it. So this concludes the demo, and I'm going to turn it back over to Mayma.